Well, let's hope this thing is uh, working. Good morning, Jack. How are you today? I don't know if you can hear me or not. I don't know if the audio is working. Oh, good. All right. Sounds good. Thank you. We got really nice prominence. It's pretty cold today, although it's about uh, four degrees Celsius. I find it very, very cold. So I'm using the uh, signature with uh, a 2.5X uh, 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 MC Barlow and the Solo Max 216 MCV1 driver, and it goes directly to uh, directly to the computer. And I'm using AmCap to adjust the. Uh, the image is really nice uh, uh, solar prominence here. Uh, actually, no, uh, because I'm using. Uh, oh, I see. I'm not using. Uh, I'm not using any. Uh, what do you call those? Uh, split cam or anything like that. It's fed directly to the computer. But I can tell you in AMCAP, there's numbers uh, besides brightness, contrast, hue, and saturation, and sharpness. I could probably tell you the numbers, what they are, and, uh, and show you the effect. Oh, camera settings? Okay, I could do that. Uh, yes, uh, I'll have to go on the other side, though, and I don't, I don't think so this thing's going to reach there. So I'll have to take my, um, my headset off my, uh, my coconut here, and then we'll, we'll do that. Uh, here's some other prominences down here. Look at that. This is very, very nice today. Woo. How they look? Uh, certainly uh, vicious. Let me uh, go around the sun. Wow, the whole the whole observatory is shaking here. Oh, good morning, uh, Anima. Anima, I guess. Not sure if, we pr if I uh, pronounced this right. <clears throat> Okay, I could do that. Uh, anima, I guess. Uh, no, not anima. You're gonna have to help me out how to pronounce this. <laughs> but uh, they're welcome to the broadcast. I'm glad that you're here, and uh, hopefully that uh, you'll enjoy that a little bit. We're just gonna go around the sun here, and I may have to uh, change some settings uh, to pull out a little bit more detail. So. Let's go for what they call a walkabout around the, uh, here's some uh, prominence there. This, last week when I did a broadcast on Sunday, there was a lot of surface detail action and uh, some minor uh, prominence, but uh, I tell you, uh, it really, today is really, really nice. Uh, we got two major uh, prominence here that's, uh, that's most impressive. Uh, good morning, Charles. Uh, glad to see you're here. Oh, there you go. All right. Oh, yeah. Wow. Holy crap, that's nice. Yeah, uh, Charles, absolutely I agree with you. There's good activity. The surface, though, is not uh, so much uh, activity as compared to last week. When I did a broadcast last week, uh, it was really, really good for surface detail. Uh, right now, it seems uh, the surface is fairly quiet, and the action is on the limb, so on the limb of the sun. So hopefully, um, it'll stay like that for a good part of the day. Um, yeah, and yes, there is a good activity on there. There's no question about it. Let me adjust the uh, the saturation on the sun here and try to bring the best of it. Here's one of the things that I do to bring the to bring the uh, prominence out. We need to tweak the software basically to what the Solarmax 2 is receiving or, or absorbing for, for, uh, for light. And of course the camera picks that up easily. And what we need to do is increase the saturation to make it look ugly a little bit or colors are too strong. And what I do with that is then I go to the hue. Once the saturation is up and you want to enhance that red, with the adjustment of the hue, what I do, I go left and right from the center. The defaults to 61, right now it's 63. What I need to do is, let's pay attention to the prominence, how red it is and how much it'll come up in the red. 
if I go to the right, as you can see, the red goes away. That means we're not getting the actual peak of what the telescope is seeing. If you go to the left, wow. So what we're looking for is um, the brightness of the red and wherever that you hit it, in this case here, it's at about 58 on the hue. 5860 yeah yeah this is where the peak is so right now what what we're doing is uh, adjusting the peak of the H alpha on the prominence so it becomes to the brightest and then we go back to the saturation and we're gonna lower how saturated the colors are and look at that we're seeing very nice detail colors are not too strong we could probably back it down a bit further more and what you may want to do is, uh, I'm observing the image here, you could turn up the brightness if you wish, or you could turn it down a little bit. That's up to you how to uh, adjust that. And of course, we've got the contrast. The contrast plays a major role. But now, if we increase the contrast to see those uh, nice prominence, we're going to lose surface detail since it's just too bright. So we'll back it down a little bit and find a balance between both. Now, obviously, this is too dark. Just doing this to uh, show the, the difference. So the contrast set at about 50 or so right at the moment, so it, it's still too high. I think 39 or so, 40 should be just perfect. There you go. Oh, good morning, uh, Connie. I'm glad that you uh, you're here, and um, thanks for being here as well. I'm going to get up here and I'm going to go on the other side. Uh, Jack asked me to turn the menu on for the camera. And that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I won't be able to talk because I have a warm room and 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 the and the dome uh, part, so I don't have access to the um, the headset all the way there. I'm going to have to find some extensions on my for that. Yeah, menu and sub menus. Okay, I'll go through it uh, nice and slowly, and then you'll be able to see some of the differences that it will make. Uh, I may do some adjustments on there. So, all right, just bear with me here for a moment. I'll. Uh, I'm gonna move my window here to the right so I can see it on the other monitor, on the other side. Okay, hang on a sec, all right. Let me go on the other side and turn the menu on, Jack, and I'll take the headset off, so here we go. I'll be right back.
Okay, uh, Jack, I don't know if you had a chance to uh, uh, capture all of this. And uh, it's pretty well very basic uh, setting. So sharpness and enhance is extremely important. And you got to tone down uh, what it's called, the, uh, the, the colors, how strong the colors are. I believe that was under the third menu. You got to bring that down. Let the capture device do that. So that's why you need to lower that to minimize the color noise. And this is not on SDI. This is on analog side, believe it or not. So just imagine if we plug this on a SDI ca capture device, uh, the views would be stunning. It would be at least 50 times better than what we're seeing there now. So we're seeing some really, really nice. Uh, uh, the fee bond is, uh, <laughs> okay, the fee bond is uh, in the water because it's full of water in the uh, a warm room and it's in the water about uh, an inch and a half so on the corner yes swimming <laughs> you don't want hey, this warm room's only a year old or so and uh it's a disaster in here the roof is leaking everywhere i need a roofer around here to figure out how we're going to fix this but anyways <laughs> a shoemaker never wears good shoes so that's i think it applies here but anyway, that'll be fixed as soon as uh, the weather's going to be improved. Uh, uh, I'm certainly going to, to do a lot of changes in here. There's a lot of work to be done in here. Right now, at least the sun is working, so it's a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm hoping it'll be fixed before then, or Jack, because we're going to be in trouble. But uh, obviously, focus is also a really, really important issue. Uh, but the final adjustment here, I'm going to give you an example about, about uh, the view we're getting. I'm going to hit default on MCAP because this is what controls the frame grabber. Wait till you see what it's going to look like when I, I'm going to hit default. We're going to lose all of this nice view. So if you folks are ready, I'm going to hit it right now. That's what it looks like. So when you use a Malin Cam signature, an extreme X2 exterminator, it doesn't matter which one. Adjustment has to be crucial at the frame grabber section. If you don't do that, you're not gonna get good results. It's just plain and simple. So let's start over again. We're gonna do it step by step. What I wanna do is uh, lower the saturation, may not default the saturations at 32, dead center of the adjustment. By doing this, what we're doing is lowering the the amount of color and if we go too far towards the left such as uh, adjustment zero it's black and white so that means we're removing all the color information and the tip you gotta follow and the same tip will apply for a deep sky object by the way a lot of people use their exterminators or the x2s or extreme and the saturation is just too strong you're getting too much color noise it's adjustable for reason and it's to adjust it to the telescope that you have and what your seeing conditions are so let's let's go slowly with the saturation going up a little bit here here's a little bit of color but it's not too, too attractive it's not a, a major thing okay here we got too much colors and we're going to back that down about 18 from 32 for now just for now now let's lower, watch what's going to happen now. You see the intensity of the color we're having now. If I lower the brightness, watch what's going to happen. So we don't overload the video input. Whoop, you're starting to get a little bit more definition here. And now we're going to jump to the contrast. Increase that slowly. Ooh, this is nice. We're getting there. We're starting to see some decent... Um, uh, the features on the surface. Now let's go back to the brightness and lower from 94, we're going down about 88. Okay, that's good enough. Go back to contrast and we're going to increase that to about 40. This is where I had it earlier. Now, the saturation now, we're going to increase it again. I want to make this look really ugly and the reason is I want to determine where is the peak? We need to get the, the peakest red possible to be able to pull those prominence. In other words, we need to adjust the, the range of the frame grabber connected to the camera 
where the solar max still gives us the, the best view in that spectrum range and for that the hue is going to change that so let's let's give it an example pay attention to the limb of the sun it's red and of course those prominent if i go with to you towards the left okay we still see some some detail on the sun but boy the intensity of the prominence has diminished quite a lot i keep going the other way well the brightness of it has also dropped all right let's go back the other way then now we're going to go towards yellow and green, and look at that, those prominence are, are, are really reduced. So that'll be hard, so let's adjust the hue again until the red part of the prominence is at its reddest. Left, right, left, and whoop, I think the peak is about here. So we got about 60 to 61, I was at 58 earlier, so that's pretty close. At that point, go back to saturation, and you're going to lower the intensity. Okay. And let me move that a little bit there. It's, uh... Okay, that's good. Now let's go back here to the contrast. Well, now we're getting a brighter image without increasing the amount of color brightness and that's what we want i'm going to lower the brightness a little bit or bring it up now you see the sky background on the left is kind of red well you you want to lower that you should have just a tint of red that's close enough all right where is my saturation from 32 to 22. we could lower that a little bit more and you're going to get a little bit more detail on the surface if you increase it too much, you've got color noise, and the darker area and the brighter areas are harder to pull out. So by lowering that contrast, another contrast, the saturation, I'm like at 22 here, this is pretty nice. Now you saw me do the adjustment on the camera, uh, sharpness and enhance. They were both on and all the way up. We got one more adjustment here to do on the sharpness. And the default is at number two. I'll put this at zero, and now we got a photographic look, what is what I call smooth, noiseless, it's, it's fine. Let's increase it, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 out of 16. Look at the amount of detail, and the only way you're gonna get that is if the brightness, contrast, hue, and saturation are done first. If you don't do the best image you possibly can, don't bother touching the sharpness. In fact, just shut it down. Now, because the brightness, contrast, hue, and saturations are well balanced, now I get to increase the sharpness without adding extra noise. And look at the amount of definition we're getting in there. No, it's not an E. No, it's just a standard because the E only works on S-Video and the signature doesn't have an S-Video. So I, I use just a standard one now. As you know, the E is going to be discontinued uh, and as soon as we run out of parts to make the E, uh, it's not going to be available anymore because now we have the AGR in the camera. You no longer need to have the E on uh, for a frame grabber. We still have some, there's not a problem, they're still being assembled actually this week. Uh, but once the parts are gone, that'll be it. That's why we introduced the uh, AGR in the camera. But in my case here, the, the, I don't need the E because the signature does not have S video and the E portion or the enhanced portion of the MCV1 only works on S video and not composite. I'm using composite right now, not even digital. So what we can do now, we're going to lower the brightness. Now did you see the amount of detail pop out on the surface? Have you noticed one thing is the color saturation got worse. So we need to go from 22 down to 18 lower that color noise but we also lost the prominence so are we a winner here no so we're going to bring up the brightness try to pull because earlier what we've done with the hue is trying to get the peak of the red to be the brightest as possible all right there you go and now you all you need to do is to find a fine balance between both and that's about it 
So we're back to where we were, give or take. Actually, we could probably lower the contrast a little bit more. So the surface, if you notice the surface of the sun will get a little bit dimmer, but yet the prominence stays there. So it's up to the individual to find a uh, fine balance. If I bring the contrast down, look at that, our prominence is still there. But here's what we need to do. As you notice, the color got stronger. So we need to go back to the saturation and lower that a little bit. It all works together. It's just to find the right combination, and that takes time. So the best view that I had earlier was about number 39 on the contrast. Saturation was at 22. I got it down to 18. I kind of like that there because it's not overbearing colors, but for bringing it up to 22, we get to bring out those prominence that I really, really like. Let me. I'm going to bring the sharpness down to 10 instead of 13. Uh, condition will affect that as well, so I think we're getting pretty good results here. Yeah, that's pretty cool. There you go. So whatever technique we apply here today to get the proper adjustment, the same thing can be done with a with a exterminator, or an extreme, an X2, a VSS, or NCHP, or even the junior. The same procedure has to be uh, done in the same way pretty well. No. Uh, you're correct there, Michael, when you say that uh, I'm displaying the image using the MCV-1. Right now, I'm not using um, a split cam or mini cam or anything like that. I, I pers this is a personal preference. Uh, th that's, this is just a personal choice. I want to have the purest form of video signal feeding the computer right away without being reprocessed, remixed with split cam because you always lose resolution. You lose so much definition. However, I'm using AMCAP, but I do not activate. Okay, I'll repeat, I don't activate under option. There's an option there that says preview. Never activate preview. The view that I'm seeing is what you guys are seeing here. So I'm using NSN to do my adjustment. And the reason is simple. That, that's correct, that's why it works. So you got it, the AMCAP, I'm only using it for adjustment. I'm using NSN to view my, my final result. So it would be pointless for me to have uh, the preview on. First of all, if the preview is on, the video signal will be authorized to go to AMCAP and not Night Skies Network. If you leave that off, it will automatically grab it by Night Skies Network. And what you're seeing is the most purest form of video signal that you can have on, uh, on NSN. Yes. Your AMCAP version does not have uh, a preview option. Is, is that what you're saying? What version I got here? Hang on. 9.01. This is the one that's on the uh, on the website. Actually, it's the free. Uh, it's the free one. Oh, okay, okay. No, you're okay. You got version point two two. So when you go into the option, first of all, you got to go to device, and you got to select uh, USB two eight two eight X. And uh, right next to it is option. Then you got preview, MPEG two, audio capture, video capture filter, video capture pin, and crossbar and video input. Now to do my adjustment, it's on the video capture filter. Now, you don't have a, a selection to, pre to click the preview or unclick the preview? Because it's version 2.2, okay. Did you download AMCAP from the website, from uh, the Malincam website?
or did you just found it on, on online people well, like through Google or or Bing's? Oh, I see. Okay, that is very unfortunate. You might uh, okay. You might want to uh, you might want to uninstall it, I guess, and try. To, uh, yeah, downgrade for sure. That's why I don't upgrade. Um, it's, I think it's really worth it. They work really good, and it works. This is on Windows 8, believe it or not, and this is a much older version of. Um, AMCAP, and it's going to work on Windows 10 as well. Um, I just did it on those little um, laptops that we have, those netbooks. Uh, tried it on Friday again, and uh, definitely we're, we're capable of uh, running that on it. Now, as the sun changed position, the surface is getting brighter. And we're going to have to do adjustment to compensate for that. And the only adjustment that we want to do Now, un under um, video capture or filter, you can have another sub window. It's called properties, and it's called video proc pro amp or proc proc amp processing amp. Um, Woody's talking about a device that he has. It's called under the same name. This one using the NCB one, it's an electronic version of it. So you need to do your adjustment according to this here. So we're going to lower a little bit the uh, contrast. There we go. That's a little bit better for our eyes. There. <laughs> Excuse me, no, no, not at all. You know, with all this new technology, Michael, uh, coming out, USB is nice. USB is fine. Uh, it's 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 okay. Um, you c you certainly can, can manipulate the signal a lot more, but you still cannot obtain uh, the definition result as we get with a true video camera feeding uh, MCV1, for an example, and feeding it directly to a Night Sky's network through the computer without going through a bunch of software. So uh, you, you, I said it again, and I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. I'm a video purist, and that's me. I mean, that, I, I, I'm looking to get some definition here. Find intricate details and things like this. You're going to get it with a real, true video camera. If you use a USB type camera, you're going to have to do post-processing and using those new software such as Astro Toasters and, and, and all of that stuff, they're nice. There's no question about it. And I really regard the people who, who, who wrote those. But you are manipulating a lot of signal here to get a, a decent result. And it's a, it's a really fine line. Is it live or is it, is it real or not? Um, in my opinion, it's not live anymore. As soon as you take that away and save it on the hard drive and then take it back again to manipulate it, that's not live. It's pretty well showing images, uh, post-processed, and then rebroadcast back on Night Sky's network using split cam, many cam, and all that. Uh, there's a huge difference. I mean, the technology is not the same. The result is not the same. Uh, for me, that's just my opinion. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm a video purist, and this is what I'm sticking into. Don't get me wrong, I really, really like the USB stuff as well, but you'll never get that amount of detail that you're seeing here. For example, you'll never get that out of a, a USB camera. It's going to be difficult. Because the processing is done in the camera already, such as the signature, the extreme, uh, uh, the exterminator, the VSS, and, and even the Junior Pro, all the processing is done in the camera, and that's the job of a real video camera. That's the technology that they use. It's built in the camera itself. It's a lot of fun, though, mind you. But we're certainly seeing some uh, really, really nice prominence here today. I can try to get a little bit... Uh, I can increase the brightness a little bit, and I noticed the upper prominence has changed shape already. I've been broadcasting now for about 30 minutes, 38 minutes or so, and uh, it has changed shape already. It would be neat to capture an actual video recording of this. I could do that with AMCAP, but not while I'm broadcasting. 
I can make a nice API of that. And uh, Dr. Simon Hammer actually did that, uh, and he got some very, very good results. Oh, okay, sounds good. Yeah, 38 minutes or so. Uh, it's been the, the time I've been broadcasting here. <clears throat> I lost my voice last night. Uh, um, doing something else, and uh, you'll have to uh, to excuse the uh, the uh, quality of voice here today is not the best. Okay, that sounds good, Jack. Sounds very, very good. So uh, we could see the prominence has changed in about 38 minutes and quite a lot. Earlier when I first came on, the, the upper prominence had really good definition in it and different strands of, uh, of prominences, but now uh, it has changed, which gives us an option to let's go around the sun and go look what else we got? Look at that. Here's a couple of little guys down there. Now, shall we go to the camera and readjust to bring him out? Or can we use the properties in, AM, in AMCAP to do processing AMP of the MCB1? Well, there you go. You could do it without touching the camera. Basically, you could go back and adjust your... Well, look at the detail on the sun. Now, that is nice. That is impressive. It's to find a, a fine balance between both. You need a camera that has also the dynamic range to do that. Oh, that's impressive. Very impressive. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to increase the brightness a bit and see if we can bring those prominence. Sometime, like last week, we saw some extension of prominence, they were way away from the sun. And they basically it was an explosion caught in the act. Here's some more uh, prominence. They're probably laying more towards the other side of the sun. Uh, this is pretty cool. We got to get nice surface detail here. And what we're gonna do is lower the brightness. Look at that. Look at the amount of detail we're seeing on the sun now. Just by playing with the brightness and the contrast. Look at that. That's what I call definition. Now, of course, we're using the the, um, the camera. The DSP is already preset inside, like I showed Jack earlier. And doing further adjustment with AMCAP, for an example, AMCAP is just an example, as long as it locks on to the MCV-1 is pretty well what you want. I find this one to be quiet today as far as... Okay, here's a very, very faint, I don't know if you guys see that, very faint prominence there. It's, uh, it's probably the aftermath of an explosion here. We're going to increase that a little bit more. Yeah, we can see it. So just by playing with the brightness, you get to bring out some of the fainter uh, detail and prominence. It allows us to study the surface and what's happening around the sun. But obviously the majestic point is uh, right over here. Oh, that's nice. Now I'm using a Barlow. If I would remove the Barlow, the only adjustment I'm going to need to touch up is the shutter. Everything else on the camera stays the same. And that's using the Barlow right now. So I have 2.5 Barlow on the uh, Solarmax uh, 2. My focus might have changed a little bit. It's something I'm going to get up later and uh, touch up. This is very, very nice. I really like what we're seeing here now. I could probably try to fine tune the brightness and bring a bit more detail on the surface. That's the high dynamic range of the camera and using a scientific grade sensor makes all the difference in the world. Yes, there is, Jack, absolutely. <clears throat> That's correct. If I want to zoom a uh, jack, I'll need to go to the camera and use the buttons. As you know, I don't use software too much to control the camera. 
I know my way around the button so well. I, I mean, you get direct access right away, but uh, actually one thing I would mind seeing on the, on the signature is, is a remote box, similar to what we use uh, on the, the other cameras. Not necessarily using a software, but an actual remote box to uh, mimic the, the five buttons at the back. That would be handy to have. But once again, um, once the settings are done on the camera, I never touch them again. Never, never, never. The only thing I'm going to go and readjust is between a Barlow or non-Barlow is the shutter. That's it. So right now we have the shutter adjusted to 1 50th of a second. Uh, if we take um, the Barlow off, it'll have to go to 1 to 3 50th of a second. Uh, yeah, it's just... Uh, I, I don't need it. <laughs> I know Michael wrote a, a deadly software for it. I don't deny that whatsoever. <laughs> I just used a button. I've got big hands, I've got big fat fingers. I don't mind using the button because you get to know how to navigate with the camera so well. Your results are instant. And once they're done, they're done. Again, I never, never touch the camera again, ever. However, if I... Um, use the exterminator or the extreme that's a different story i'm going to use the fan software to control uh, the camera the shutter and all of that that's a different story but for solar solar work on the signature no uh, I, I just use the rear buttons you set them up once exactly the way i showed you earlier and you just let it go uh, and enjoy the view the rest of the fine tuning is done through the properties of amcap under the video uh, processor amp tab. Very windy here today. I don't know if you hear the banging happening. It's the loose parts of the roof flapping on top of the building here. And uh, we're having a lot of wind here today and it's cold. Michael, I understand. Uh, I'm in the same boat as, <laughs> as you are, being too lazy, but I, I love astronomy so much I don't mind at all getting up and go play with the buttons and get them, get them right. Because I know once they're right, I get to sit back and enjoy and I don't have the headache to worry about which adjustment and whatever else. Once they're done, they're done. I sit back and I study what I look at. Then I get lazy. <laughs> Yes, Jack, I wouldn't mind that at all. It's, it's terrible what has happened in Louisiana, Jack. Uh, I was watching the news a little bit earlier after we Skype, and uh, it's, it's just horrible. Now, can we see just the prominence? Well, yeah, we can. We can probably see the prominence if we increase the brightness. We're going to see them in different a configuration so never mind the surface of the sun but if we increase the brightness only and what you want to do is move you see if you leave the sun where it is there now and try to bring out the prominence that's one thing but the surface of the sun is overpowering to our eyes right now on the screen so move the subject of interest the region of interest ROI, region of interest, in the middle, and then you get to focus on uh, the prominence and do the proper adjustment just to bring them out. There, look at that. Look at those prominence, aren't they gorgeous? This is beautiful to look at. On moments of uh, steady seeing, I tell you, the uh, the image is very, very nice. That is beautiful. That's a good observation point there, Connie. You're absolutely right. Look at the curling that it does. I've never seen that before. And I mean, I've seen that. I, I do solar observing on a regular basis uh, every weekend. In fact, I broadcast when it's nice. 
And I've never seen curly effect like that ever. This is very, very nice. A good, good, uh, steady seeing. I tell you, the image comes really, really nice and sharp. Yes, of course, Sir Connie, you certainly can. What would you like to know? Okay, that's on the moon mode and looking at the daytime image. Now you're looking at daytime image of your surrounding around your place or are you looking at the moon in the daytime? That's another thing I like to do is look at the moon in the daytime. Okay, you can only do one function. If you try to reset the ALC and you've hit the moon mode, um, you've got to hit the moon mode and then go under the, the tab, uh, advanced tab. Make sure the indicator at the bottom is done. That means, I think it turns either yellow or red, I can't remember. While the function is being sent to the camera, you've got to wait till that stops. Because if you do it while the uh, adjustments are being sent from the auto moon mode and you go onto the advanced tab and you happen to hit something in there such as ALC, it will freeze. And the simple reason is you gotta wait for the command to stop sending uh, the previous command. That's the only reason you're gonna jam it. So what you gotta do is simply, uh, the only thing that you gotta do is just unplug it to reset it for about two or three seconds, plug it back again and you're good to go. Because the functions on the camera, whatever it's the exterminator, the extreme, uh, X2s, or even the junior pro is the same. When you send a command, wait till the command is, is done with. And then you can go and send a command such as ALC, uh, wait until the command is sent. Always wait a few seconds between each uh, step that you're gonna do of adjustments under the software. Now, which software are you using? Um, I'm just curious to know. Here's another thing too, Dakani, you gotta make sure the deep sky or the sense up is set at off. A lot of the time we're gonna hit the preset. I never use the preset on the software, first of all. The reason is I go onto the advanced and I do all my adjustment there and I learn to do them that way instead of using the presets. Um, what happened is, if you're going to go, let's say, for 113,000, like you said, and if you only set to 11,000, you've got to wait till the command has been sent. But if that um, happens, it means the command was not finished being sent and replied back to the camera. So when a computer sends a command to the camera, it has, the camera has to reply back to the computer, it says, okay, I'm done. And once it's, once it's done, then you get to do your adjustment. Another way the camera may jam is if you don't have the sense up, set to off. You have to manually do it. Uh, it'll go from X2 all the way up to X128X, which is 128 times more sensitive, which is about two second exposure. You don't want to do that. You want to set that up manually to off, completely to off, and then you can do your adjustments your shutter adjustments, which is one, one 3,000. You want to go back down to one 100 and make sure the camera is an ALC, not ELC. That's one reason I like using the rear buttons because every command you do is done directly and right away and one at a time with no delay. So it's, I really like the rear buttons. Everybody hates them, but I, I like them. But the, uh, the software itself, Lukanda, it's, it's quite straightforward. Try to practice using the advanced, never mind the presets. The presets will pre-adjust it as a starting point only. 
And once in a while I notice when we use a preset for some reason, depending on the computer you're going to use and, and how, how fast the computer is and how busy it is, it always seems to miss the sense up adjustment. Move from deep sky, which will send the camera to about 128x, to solar or lunar, it'll send it down to, it should put the sense up to off, and a lot of the time it doesn't. Okay, if you have a bluish screen, that means you lost video. If the uh, screen turns blue, you lost video. That means you got to go into the, the video tab, select your input that you uh, that you have. Is it a composite or is it the S video? If you're using the uh, composite, you got to go under the uh, video tab, and under the video tab, you'll have to uh, select. Uh, Composite or S video, and in your case, it'll be composite. Make sure that's selected. But first, you need to select the uh, MCB one, which is the two eight two eight X. Yeah, some computers cannot handle that. Yeah, they will, it will handle it. It will handle the actual communication flow, but let it do until it's done on each step. Same with the zoom. When you play with the zoom, you've got to wait a few seconds for different steps. You send a command from the computer to the camera, and then the camera is going to reply back to the computer. But meanwhile, you've got a frame grabber happening that's hogging your USB ports. And other things too that you got in there. If you've got a webcam happening, although it's not on, the, the signal is still taking uh, resources from your computer. You know the moon's coming out, uh, Connie, and one of the best ways to practice with the camera, I, I keep saying it to everybody, practice on the moon. That's got to be the best thing that you could do uh, to get acquainted. Most of the commands will be done fairly quickly that way. Yeah, I know. I guess I'll do what it is. We're going to get the same thing here, I think, tomorrow. I'm hoping to be able to broadcast again tomorrow. Uh, the sun, and probably I'll do it a little bit earlier than, than today. Well, we're having really, really nice uh, prominence here at the moment. So we're going to readjust the, uh, the brightness so we can capture a little bit of the, uh, the surface. Wow, really nice surface detail. That's amazing. Look at the, look at the surface detail we're getting. Uh, we're working on it. Anima, we're working on it. Uh, it's going to be called the MFR uh, 10, and that's we're trying to find a balance with the MFR 10 that will be usable on a half-inch sensor. And also with the larger sensors like the ICX-825 and the IMX-302, such as the DS-3.2 Plus, and uh, possibly also the Universe APS size. We're working on it right now. There's a lot of work into it. I have a few prototypes that I've made at the shop. They're here. Uh, they contain eight elements, actually, and uh, because we need to have a lot of correction done to it, to the final image. And we need to maintain where the scope is emphasized to be used at. In other words, the idea of focusing position for, the, for any scope. So it's parfocal basically from an eyepiece or not an eyepiece. It'll be parfocal from a camera to the focal reducer. So if you take the focal reducer out, you're going to have about a quarter inch of adjustment to do, which is next to nothing. And if you put the focal reducer on, you've got about a quarter inch of adjustment to do. Uh, onto the the focuser, if you're using a, uh, a Richard Crichet, for an example, very, very easy to do. We try to maintain the power focal ability to maintain also the idea of focusing point for each telescope. 
And this is very difficult to do. Yeah, there is a jack, definitely. You can have two different prototypes to test out. I have another prototype here I haven't tried yet. Uh, I just brought it in today. I'm hoping tonight, if it's clear, I'll be able to, uh, to do a few tests here. Sounds good, Connie. The best thing to do, Connie, is... Uh, uh, the best thing to do is play with the camera until you blow it up, basically. That's what I tell a lot of people. Until you jam the thing real good and you get so frustrated that you're going to unplug the power for five seconds, plug it back in, and then you're ready to start over again. <laughs> it's the only way to learn sometime. We're seeing some really nice detail here on the on the surface of the sun.